Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Good evening. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I want to come on here with an update and some more information on the diddler, okay? So first of all, earlier today, Cassie Ventura finally spoke out. And this is what Cassie had to say about the situation as we know she's been quiet ever since the lawsuit was filed, but she's adamantly stood by her claims. So today she posted this on her social media page. She says, thank you to all the love and support from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have yet to meet. The outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now. But this was only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I would become. With a lot of hard work, I am better today, but I will always be recovering from my past. Thank you to everyone that has taken the time to take this matter seriously. My only ask is that everyone open your heart to believing victims the first time. It takes a lot of heart to tell the truth out of a situation that you were powerless in. I offer my hand to those that still live in fear, Reach out to your people. Don't cut them off. No one should carry this weight alone. This healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. Thank you. Love always, Cassie. So that was her message that she sent today on social media, and I have to say I definitely love the message. She definitely sounds like she's in a lot better place mentally. She's absolutely correct when she, she says that she became someone that she thought that she would never be because a lot of women don't even realize that they're in domestic violence situations until it's too late. You know, so I'm glad that she is out of that situation. Even though that video was gut-wrenching and hard to watch, I'm glad that that video proved that everything she was saying was factual, and it woke a lot of people up who thought that she was just out here chasing a bag. So kudos to Cassie, and I pray that she continues healing. So in other news, this broke about an hour ago. If you guys don't know, a seventh woman has filed a lawsuit against Diddy, okay? So the other day, former model Crystal McKinley had filed her lawsuit um, that took place back in 2003. Now today, another woman has come out. She's also releasing pictures of herself and a love letter from the diddler. So we're gonna go ahead and read what this lawsuit is claiming. So this is coming from the Daily Beast and they're saying, a seventh accuser in six months came forward on Thursday to accuse Sean Diddy Combs of violently sexually assaulting her, bringing a bombshell lawsuit in which she lays out a series of harrowing claims that describes his genitalia in detail. April Lampros was a student in New York City's Fashion Institute of Technology when she met Combs in 1994. According to the suit, which the Daily Beast obtained moments after it was filed in the New York State Supreme Court. Knowing she dreamed of working in the fashion industry, Combs, now 54, dangled the promise of helping kickstart her career, promising to mentor her and introduce her to the industry executives, the complaint states. Soon after their meeting, Combs allegedly began to love bomb her, showering her with gifts, flowers, including a handwritten Valentine's Day note. But the rapper's behavior towards her then took a darker turn that summer, turning into an, into an aggressive, corrosive, and abusive relationship based on sex, according to the lawsuit. Over a period stretching from 1995 to 1998, there were four terrifying sexual encounters Miss Lampros endured at Combs' hand, the complaint alleges. She eventually found the courage to leave him around 1998, it states, but not before Combs and his then-girlfriend, Kim Porter, got her fired from the bar where she worked. At the time that she ended their relationship, Miss Lampros called Mr. Combs' penis being adolescently both in length and width. Wow. So she's basically saying he's not working with a whole lot, okay? She recalls him being circumcised and remembers a tattoo on his chest. Lampros lawyer Tyrone Blackburn filed the lawsuit on Thursday. 
filed the lawsuit on Thursday evening under the Gender Motivated Violence Act, a New York measure that allows victims of gender-based violence to file civil claims even after the statute of limitations has expired. Unlike the Adult Survivors Act, which expired last November, the legislation has a filing deadline of 2025. Blackburn told the Daily Beast, using a Latin phrase, literally meaning, let things speak for itself. Blackburn also provided a statement from Lampos, who said, I'm confident that the justice system will prevail and the veil will be removed so that no other women will have to endure what I did. A spokesperson for Combs did not immediately return a request for comment on Thursday. So in this first picture, um, they're saying that it's coming from April Lam that it's coming from April Lampos and she was at Diddy's Florida home. So they go on to say Lampros says in the lawsuit that she first became involved with Combs shortly after his son Justin was born. Combs would often invite her to his bad boy recording studio to impress her, the lawsuit states. Including in the filing are photos of Lampos and Combs, as well as images of Lampos at a house identified as a rapper's Florida home. Combs even went so far as to invite Lampos to his first Father's Day celebration. The suit goes on, including photos of the invitation. However, what appeared to be Combs' generosity quickly manifested into an aggressive, corrosive, and abusive relationship based on sex, the suit alleges. It claims Combs never let Lampos tell anyone about their alleged relationship because he didn't want anyone knowing that he was dating a white woman. Although Combs flew Lampos to see him in various cities around the United States, he first assaulted her at Manhattan's Millennium Hotel, according to the lawsuit. Lampos had met with Combs earlier that evening at a bar on Houston Street, where she drank lightly. A third person, a woman whose name is redacted in the court filings, was with Combs, it says. When Combs and Lampos left the bar and were driven to the hotel, Lampos began to feel like the walls were closing in on her, according to the suit. She was laid on the hotel bed where Mr. Combs forced himself on top of her, the suit continues. Mr. Combs began to kiss Lampos as she turned her head, trying to avoid the interaction. He grabbed her face and Mr. Combs continued kissing her forcefully. Miss Lampos informed him that she wasn't feeling well, but he ignored her words and continued taking off her clothing. Miss Lampos tried to hold on to her clothing, but she felt weak and powerless in that situation. She pled with Mr. Combs to stop and he ignored her. Miss Lampos was being raped by Mr. Combs and soon passed out. When she woke up the next morning, the lawsuit says that Lampos was nude, sore, and confused, and that she had put her clothes on and left the hotel room as quickly as possible. So this is the picture of the Valentine's Day note, and it says, Happy Valentine's Day, love, Puffy. Still, Mr. Combs used his power and access to music industry events to lure Miss Lampos back to him floating promises of access to his industry to pursue her passion. Miss Lampos was a hopeful yet naive college student and took Mr. Combs at his word and believed that the first rape was a possible malignant and decided to give him a second chance. Lampos, who at the time had an internship at Arista Records, agreed to meet with Combs near his apartment where he managed to regain her trust. Everything seemed back to normal until Combs forced himself onto Lampos for the second time. This time, the attack occurred at the Midtown parking garage, according to the suit. There, a slightly inebriated Combs allegedly forced Lampos to her knees, unzipped his pants, and forced his penis into her mouth. As Miss Lampro's eyes filled with tears, she could see the parking garage attendant witnessing this horrible assault. This had no impact on Mr. Combs. When Mr. Combs was done with her, he told her to get up. Miss Lampos was in shock, morally depleted, embarrassed, and in physical agony. Again, Lampos decided to cut things off with Combs, who came back with more expensive presents and empty promises, according to the suit. This time, however, Combs became enraged at being turned down and adopting a mobster persona that frightened Lampos, the lawsuit states. She felt stuck with him, and the suit says his connections could ensure her compliance with his demands. In 1996, several hours into a night of drinking at Combs' Manhattan apartment, he first he forced Lampros and his then-girlfriend, Kim Porter, to take ecstasy, according to the lawsuit. Mr. Combs forced the pill down their throats to ensure the pills were swallowed. Mr. Combs' hands were so far down Miss Lampros' throat that she gagged. He even checked under her tongue. 
Then he ordered Lampos and Porter to have sex, warning Lampos that he could make her lose her job if she refused, according to the complaint. After watching for some time, Combs eventually shoved Porter off of Lampos and allegedly forced his penis inside of her. Lampos recalled being numb and emotionally checked out during the rape. By 1998, Lampos left Combs having finally suffered enough, her lawsuit explains. Then she goes on to show this invite that she kept all these years. And basically, this was an invite to Sean's first Father's Day party for Justin. So then they go on to say, still he managed to get revenge by calling her boss and demanding that she be fired from her job at a Soho bar. According to the suit, Lampos's boss acquiesced, afraid of Mr. Combs and his contacts. When she called Combs to say that she was out of work, he laughed. The fourth assault, the fourth sexual assault allegedly occurred around the end of 2000 when Lampo saw Combs at an event at the Rockefeller Center. He approached her telling the crew he was with to switch their cameras off and asked her to leave with him. She rejected him and left alone according to the suit. Combs couldn't leave her alone, however, but raging her over the phone for the next few days, begging to see her. She eventually gave in and allowed him to come over to her apartment, where he began apologizing for his past behaviors and started telling her that he was a changed man. He then showered her with compliments, telling her how good she looked and kept reminiscing about their prior sex life. He then began dropping hints about them having sex, it continues. Lampos rejected him. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Combs grabbed her, began kissing and touching her against her will. She eventually fought him off and ordered him to leave. Around the time of this final assault, according to the suit, Combs was in a very public relationship with Jennifer Lopez. The couple would split the next year, with Lopez citing his infidelity in a 2003 interview with Vibe magazine. It was the first time I was with someone who wasn't faithful, she told the magazine. I was in a relationship with Combs where I was totally crying, crazy, going nuts, and it really took my whole life into a tailspin. Despite the passage of more than two decades, Lampos has not been fully able to escape Combs, according to her suit. Just last year, it states that a gentleman approached her at a function to inform, to inform the man she was dating at the time that he should reconsider dating her because he personally saw a video of her and Sean Combs having sex. The video was allegedly filmed in the summer of 1997 without Lampos' consent, and she did not know of its existence until 2023. It was under the Gender Motivated Violence Act that Combs' sixth alleged victim, former model Crystal McKinley, filed a lawsuit earlier this week, accusing him of forcing her to perform oral sex on him. The first sign of a mountain of legal troubles came for Combs on November 16th of 2023 when R&B singer Cassandra Ventura, also known professionally as Cassie, sued him for raping and abusing her over the course of their nearly decade-long relationship. She settled privately with Combs the next day, but the floodgates have officially been open. All right, so that is the latest lawsuit in this Diddy saga. This entire situation is getting crazier and crazier, but like I said before, I'm not shocked. I knew eventually the floodgates would be open and more women and men would definitely come forward in this situation. I think he thought for years he was untouchable, but he's finding out that people you know what I'm saying, are not playing with him and people want their just dues. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up playing out and to see who else comes up with the lawsuit against the diddler. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situ on this entire disturbing situation on the 7th accuser against Sean Diddy Combs. How do y'all feel about the accuser and what she has to say? How do you guys feel about her story? And then also, how do you feel about Cassie and what she said earlier today as well? So I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Once again, thank you all so much for subscribing. Feel free to share the video and don't forget to hit the video with a like as well. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.
subscribe.